Welcome in to another episode of Bleeding Purple, a podcast about the Minnesota Vikings. My name is Tyler Haig, and I am joined, as always, by Mr. Andy Patrick. What's up, dude? What's up? So, another, another win. Another win. Hooray! Vikings win 24-7 against the uh, much ballyhooed Los Angeles Rams. And much ballyhooed for good reason, because I was kind of looking at some of their previous scores. Uh, the last four weeks was 27, 33, 51, 33. And this mm-hmm. Vikings defense holds them to seven points. I think they played like the Giants and the Texans. They did. Without the, Giants, Sean Watson. the Giants was 51. That was who they dropped 51. And they played the Texans without Deshaun Watson. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, some of those... As we learned yesterday, yeah, but some of those were uh, a little overrated. Definitely, and that I mean that was all I heard. And you know how good their offense was, and how good Goff was, and that defense really, really played well. And aside from that first drive, which was uh, how many? It was seventy. How many yards? Seventy-five yards? No, yeah, it couldn't have been. So. yeah seventy-five there. yards in like nine plays. And aside from that drive, they basically had nothing going on offense, essentially. The rest of the game, they held Gurley to 37 yards. He did have a touchdown on that opening That's really good. Or opening drive. But, yeah, very impressive. Keenum looked unbelievable, like seriously unbelievable. <laughs> he had some, he had some uh, scary plays. Oh, the one at the end of the first quarter where he ducked under the guy mm. and then other guy – and then he threw it to and Appealing. Oh my god. That was one of yeah. those like that was a heat yeah. check moment. Are you yelling and being like, uh ah. the worst. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There we go. That was like yeah. exactly my response. And I am <laughs> Zimmer said seems to have a couple of those same moments. Thing. He does. And that is that's I mean, the oblique good, throw. It's the the good and the and the bad. You weigh you weigh that because so far so good with those, but you don't want those to come and bite you in the butt. No, later or on. become like a habitual thing that you're trying to do because that's how turnovers happen is throws like that where you're escaping a guy and about to get drilled and you throw it up. Like it was an amazing play. It was a great play. Well, oh, yeah. Well done, Keenum. Well done, Thielen. But, ugh. But yeah, so Keenum played incredible. Thielen, also amazing. He, what did Thielen oh, have? Yeah. 123 yards and touchdown. He is number two in receiving. yeah in receiving in the NFL, which is amazing. We'll talk about him like separately later, but back to the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, the defense is really good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you think that? I mean, obviously the defense played very well. We always ask this: Who won it? Did somebody lose it? Did was this? Are the Rams that good on offense and the defense looked this good, or were what we saw from the Rams more because of who they were playing? Was that offense not as impressive as maybe we were led to believe by some of those scores? Um, I, I think they still do have a good offense. They just ran into a really, really good defense mm-hmm. in the Vikings. And I think I think the game actually could have been much different had the Rams got that um, touchdown. In like the second quarter, I think when Anthony Harris stripped him, the fumble on yes, the, the yes. one yard line changes the that, game completely. Yeah, if they, score. it could have been, it could have been fourteen to seven at the half, and then you know it could have been way different in the second half. The Rams would have had you know some momentum, and the Vikings might not have been able to be 
maybe as aggressive on defense as they were able to be. But, yeah, they still have a good offense. They're, they'll probably still make the playoffs, but the Vikings' defense is just ridiculous right now. It really is ridiculous right now. <laughs> who would you... And Emerson you, Griffin didn't even get a sack yesterday. That's what I was just going to say was who is the most valuable. It's like every week you could pick a different most valuable player on defense. You know, it's like seems like one week it's Barr plays incredible. One week Linval, well, Linval Joseph is pretty good every week. But, you know, yeah. Griffin will go off one game. I mean, it's a different impressive performance by a different member, it seems like, every week. Yeah. Um, was it? Yesterday, I do like the offensive and defensive MVPs for each week for mm-hmm. after the game for the Viking Age, and I picked Anthony Harris yesterday just because the way he was able to step up and make that play. But you know, you could have argued for Harrison Smith, um, even what Mackenzie Alexander. He had a couple good moments. Yep. Daniel Hunter was in there. Kendricks was all over the place again. Mm-hmm. You know, they just have someone on like every single level that. Is re- does is, does a really good you know is really good at their job. Yeah, that uh, I agreed with you by the way on that uh, because of he's coming in he's not a starter he comes in Anthony and Harris, plays yeah. that well yeah as a backup to step up and then and not only I just played that well during the game but then to have a turnover like that just an outstanding yeah I think that makes that can make um, I'm not sure if he's a free agent or not but I think that can make um, Sandejo maybe expect expendable yeah, yeah expendable yeah at the end of the year because sandejo is not like amazing but Mm-mm. you know harris is is pretty good and if you can keep him in there for a cheaper price then that might be a good way to go maybe draft somebody yeah and you could almost argue that sandejo and the way he plays and how hard he hits is almost a liability because of the penalties that yeah. he draws and and things like that and he has <laughs> been injury. playing playing better in coverage or before the injuries he can cause to your own players exactly or himself <laughs> for that matter because he always yeah. seems to miss a couple yeah. of weeks a season uh with some type of nagging injury but yeah that defense is unbelievable uh let me ask you this big picture okay. question is this defense good enough to lead this team to like a super bowl is this like on the level of like a 2000 ravens and a bears 85 kind of a situation where I maybe 85 bears because i think that defense might be a little overrated just from their super bowl performance okay. but they actually had like a legitimate offense like they had walter payton and yes they did a couple other players they had Les- they had leslie frazier on defense actually mm-hmm. um no i do not think that this vikings team is as, defense is as good as the ravens because like back in the day because that defense was ridiculous they that team literally had no offense like i think they shut out opponents like maybe five or six times mm-hmm. that I year was, so i was looking at those stats i wrote the uh thing on keenum a couple of weeks ago and i was looking at stats from that 2000 ravens season from those quarterbacks granted <laughs> it was in 2000 so like it's yeah. you know you have to adjust for inflation or whatever but oh my god those stats are bad horrible like, like yeah. horrible because i was able to make like a case god i fucking hate that Oh, I shouldn't swear, but I hate that his name is Case. It bothers me so much. You could make the <laughs> um, case that Case Keenum is better than those yeah. quarterbacks. No, he's not he's even better, close. Yeah, no, yeah, he's better than Trent Dilfer and what they had Tony Banks, I think, too, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. back then. Um, but I think it's hard to have a defense like that nowadays just because the, the rules are way different. Everything's geared around an offense. Like, you can barely touch yeah. the, the offensive players, like, Back when they were playing, when the Ravens were playing with that good defense, they could just be physical and just knock people all over the place, no matter what. Yeah. But the, the Vikings are still physical, but you know they have to play within the rules too. So. Yeah, it's not like they're able to knock guys unconscious with helmet to helmet hits the way that Ravens team was. Because they look at some of yeah. the highlights of that. They, oh yeah, you got Ed Reed and Ray Lewis. Yeah. Head back there, man. murdering cool. people. I mean, hitting people. Really are yeah, maybe wrong. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not the right word. Oh uh, whoops. Um back to the defense. One stat that kind of surprised me, uh they are only the Vikings are only plus two in the turnover margin. Mm-hmm. And not 
how do I want to say this? I mean, if we're watching all the games, obviously. You see the turnovers that they're having that they're not having. But the defense is so good and such a huge part of this team. I guess I almost expected that turnover number to be the takeaway number for them to be higher. Yeah. Um, I think that actually makes them look better, though, because because you see teams that have, like, get high turnovers and, and games and the defense begins to, like, rely on those turnovers. Yes. Unlike the Vikings who, you know – they don't need those. They're just a really good defense. Yes, and that the, was turn- be- the turnovers. Yeah, the turnovers are just like a plus. Yeah, pretty much. Like they just make it even better. Yeah, it winds up being like- gravy on top, and that's when you wind up with a score of twenty four seven because you got yeah. a turnover. Because that should have been a 24-14, 21-14 yeah. kind of game. Should have been thirty to seven if Kai Forbreath can make a field goal. <sighs> but uh, <laughs> not that the Vikings. I've ever had any kicking problems in their history. Oh, it just drives me. And I, that was one of the – he missed that, and I was like, oh, too confident. That second one I was, was horrible. Feeling, yeah, I was like – The I one was, that hit the post? It was like a knuckleball. Like, and, yeah, and like that was never got hear. more than like 15 feet off the ground. Just like – I don't understand it either. He's kicking indoors, but – Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> they didn't so open, they didn't. They didn't open the doors yesterday like Zimmer teased, but <laughs> – I heard that. What a terrible – don't open the doors. It's cold, man. <laughs> sucks out right now but it's it's mike zimmer yeah he's totally like he zimmer fits so well with uh that's like bud grant in the t-shirt like coming out when it's three that's zimmer him yeah it's yeah you could see him doing that yeah exactly 20 years with one eye (laughs) because poor dude just can't get his eyes right um He'll he'll just be blind by then yeah exactly oh poor guy i can't imagine getting that many needles stuck in one's eye that just yeah oh, um real quick about not the vikings specifically what did you think of greg olson on the call for i think it was Fox good there yeah i was surprised at how much yeah i don't want to say it i wasn't impressed by i mean tony romo kind of ruined the guys coming yeah out of football i'm kind of getting the, he's kind of getting old though is it oh, tony, see, oh, <laughs> tony he gets Romo's too excited like Chill out a little bit, dude. <laughs> Stop. Like I like that's he's getting to like John Gruden level where like Gruden gets excited about like everything. Yeah. Like and Romo like Look at this I think in the, guard. Yeah, yeah. In the in the beginning of the year, Romo was like making all those predictions and stuff and now he's kinda like he's still making them but they're not they're not all turned out to be right. Yeah. But no, I thought he did good, you know. I don't think there was ever a concern about him getting any secrets from the Vikings. Yeah. Like like the team apparently was not happy with him being there, but I mean, what's the difference between him studying film of you guys? He has to study both the teams first off. He has to study the Rams and the Vikings. Yeah, and then he has to you know prepare himself for the broadcast. You know, he's, he doesn't have time to just go. He was gonna steal steal an iPad or something from the Vikings locker room yeah. and bring it back. <laughs> Listen to PA and Wabi the morning. Or no, it would have been the Friday before that game. They do. How'd the, you like, do that? Oh, yeah. it was. Uh, well, I turned it. I honestly did. But that was it, that was their whole. It was the two of them. I can't believe that the NFL thought it would be okay. Try that with Bill Belichick. See what Bill Belichick says if you ask him if Greg Olson can. And I'm like, you guys, pump the brakes. Like <laughs> he, it wasn't that big of a deal. They didn't feel like they had to tell anybody because he wasn't gaining any like information. That's like no, he didn't even he didn't even go. He wasn't. He said he wasn't scheduled to go to like normally the broadcast team meets with like coaches and yeah, players. No production him. meetings, no practices. Yeah. He was just going to yeah. show up and call it. Yeah. yeah, just study on his own, do his own film work and stuff, and stuff that he would do as a player already. Yeah. So yeah, it was a little. Realistically, less than he would be doing as a player. Yeah, because he had to do both. Because he had to do both teams. Yeah, drives me it, stuff like that. See, and like obviously, we have a podcast about the Vikings, so we like to talk about stuff. You know, and like talkers, that stuff doesn't bother me. But like, this just seems like one of those like this is a non-story reaching, you know, like, reaching, yeah, yeah. make something out of, yeah. out of nothing. Oh, I'm outraged by this. Are you? Or are you? <laughs> are you bored? Are you bored because there's because your team's doing really well and there's nothing really to talk about besides the Teddy Case thing, or this. And that's that's starting to go away too. It is. Let's talk about him. I'm fine with that going away too. By the way, as long as they're winning, like it doesn't it doesn't matter. I just don't. Well, Zimmer said his like post game. He still says things yeah. like. 
I like he's yeah he's got a horseshoe for that play like, and like yeah, I was like, holding I my breath I don't want to no you don't want to know what I was thinking during that yeah he says that just because he doesn't want probably he doesn't doesn't want Case to get too comfortable and feel like you that know, was going to be my question do you think he's fight for his doing job. this because he feels like Case Keenum is like he's performing really well because he doesn't or maybe not because he doesn't know that he's going to start but we've been doing the same thing for five weeks and he's played really well <laughs> over those five weeks i'm going to yeah. keep doing the same thing over the next however many weeks well i think he no i think zimmer's just always like that like he doesn't even if a, you know you have to do something like really really well and to impress him like even with Thielen, he's just like i don't know how he keeps making plays like he just he just does but like you know, he just wants to keep his players motivated, and I think that's one of the ways he does it by not being like, you know, he did he played well today, but you know, there's still some things he can work on and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah I just think that's one of his his ways to keep players motivated, especially because you know he could put Teddy in if Keenum starts to to play bad. Yeah. Do you think that this game? I mean, obviously Keenum will be starting uh, Thursday. Do you think this makes that leash longer now? Do you think that Keenum has more – like, say, if Zimmer was going to give him one bad game before he was going to pull him, do you think this game got him a second bad game before he gets pulled? Yeah, I think I think the players and most people now agree that he should probably just be the starter for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. You know, they got a good thing going – there's, you're gonna run out of time to you know get Teddy in there and get him adjusted or whatever he needs to do to get ready for a playoff run because you know you don't want to get him in there with like two games to go yeah and he gets in the playoffs and you know his head spinning or whatever <clears throat> but I was just thinking about this yesterday just my cruel mind of how the perfect scenario would be that Case Keenum gets hurt in like the last game or whatever. And then the Vikings have a bye, so Teddy gets two weeks to prepare for <laughs> yeah, and the playoffs. Then he starts <laughs> and then he starts and leads into the Super Bowl. But I don't want, you know, I obviously I don't want Keenum to get yeah, hurt or anything. But I, that's the only way I think that Teddy gets in right now is if if Keenum gets hurt. Yeah, I mean, there's just it doesn't seem there's nothing and he's that had he's some, done he's over had the some, season. He's taking some big hits, so there's yeah. there is that chance. And he's diving head first out there and stuff. Have you noticed? His people have been talking a lot recently, or I guess yesterday after this game, about his mobility and how that – have you seen that improve? Have you seen – I mean, it seems like he's moving around the pocket better, mm-hmm. but do you think that that is having a direct impact on how well the offensive line has been looking too? Do you think – Yeah, I think so. Well, I think it, they can call more plays – you know rollouts and stuff than they would be able to with Sam Bradford because you know yeah Bradford's not like speed demon or whatever mm-hmm. um he didn't even do that well stepping up in the pocket but yeah that was what I was just gonna say was even <laughs> but he barely could move yeah, in the pocket. sometimes I get a little nervous though with Keenan back there because he seems to like just keep going more and more backwards and that seems like an old habit of his that they're trying to get rid of yeah but for the most part, I think the Vikings have done a good job of putting him in situations where he either gets rid of the ball quick or he's on a rollout and he has, like, a designated person he's supposed to throw to. Yeah. Or they're like, okay, you're just going to just drop back a couple steps and throw deep no matter what. They're not They're not giving him, you know, a lot of time back there to, to do mess up. Yeah. So. Do you – as far as the offensive line goes, do you think we should be giving – the way on a side note, by the way, Pat, Pat Shermer is gone after this year, no yeah, matter what. Yeah, there's <laughs> he's no gone. way he's staying. He's, he's well, and this. that was that was kind of that is part of what makes me think that Case Keenum should be starting the rest of the year because you're only going to have this like mm-hmm. the band is only going to be together for this season, and it's yeah. going really well. And you should just keep the band together as long as you can because yeah. Shermer is going to be gone. Keenum's probably gone next year. And, I don't. Yeah, I don't think they should resign him, anyways. Yeah, and and then Teddy's going to be your guy, and that'll be a new situation. That feels cleaner to me than trying to force Teddy in because yeah. Keenum looked okay, and you know it just feels like putting Teddy in at this point is almost like 
a lateral move as opposed to yeah. moving forward with there's no real the there's no scheme. real need like if they were going to do it they would have done it on sunday and they didn't and mm-hmm. then they won so they you know or if they felt no they needed to make a move that yeah. would have been the day to do it because if they whoever they had start against the rams was you know kind of start against the lions because of the short week so yep. and i don't think they would have even if keenum lost i don't think they would have started teddy on thursday just because of the short week yeah but if he struggled against the lions then i could have seen you know teddy being able to get in the week after i think they're playing the falcons because yeah. he has that those extra couple of days but yeah no they won it's, it's crazy how one game just can change the whole uh <laughs> change everything <laughs> going forward yeah. yeah it's unbelievable um Back to the O-line, do you think that we should be giving more credit to the O-line coach, to Mr. Tony Sperano? Or because it's such a new group, because it's a new group of guys, or do you think that I think it has to do a lot with the offense. Yeah, do you think that the other other stuff is helping? But, yeah, but the offensive line is doing well. But I've always thought the play of the offensive line has to do with, like, the play calling like you look at a north turner offense and you have to block for like 10 seconds before the quarterback even you know can throw the ball yeah and then with, at the end of his with Shermer, he's throwing a lot of screens getting the ball out quick you know making it easier for the lineman to block but at the same time in the running game these guys are doing great they're just pushing the defense lineman you know down the field yeah Elfline's getting downfield on screens so they're playing really well. I think they've only allowed one sack in the last four games. Yeah, ten total over the season, tied for yeah. first in the NFL. Who would have yeah. thought that four, at four, the beginning of the year? Four of those came in that one half with Bradford in there against the yeah. Bears. Oof. So it could be even less. And those weren't even like real sacks because he was just falling over and getting yeah. touched and by the defender. And they've been out without Remmers since the London game. Mm-hmm. He's been out with a concussion, yeah, which is a little look. little worrisome that he's still been out with a concussion. Mm-hmm. But Hill has uh, been filling. Yeah, in he's been good, real been well. Good. Uh, Elf, not Elfline, uh, Easton's back in there. Mm. Riley Reef is doing great. I don't think he's allowed a sack. Was Easton matched up against Donald for most of the game? Because man, that Donald I wasn't character. Paying, was I wasn't not, paying attention, but I, no. But they did a good job. Yeah, they did a good job. You know, not letting him take control of the game and stuff. I mean, he had that one rough in the passer uh, penalty, but other than that, I don't really remember hearing too much about him in the game. Yeah, and that one felt like a, I better get a shot on because I haven't gotten a shot on him all day. So I better. Yeah. Like, I'm here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit him. Mm-hmm. He said, Aaron Donald said after the game that uh, where's this quote here? Case did a good job of making plays with his feet because we was beating them. Meaning that they were, he was beating the offensive line in case. Well, was what, what was happening when Case Keenum had like ten seconds to throw and yeah, or the time Case Keenum got like touched by every member of the Rams defensive yeah, and, line and still completed and it, completed a pass. Oh, I think they did good. The the Rams have a good pass rush, and the Vikings did well against them. It makes you you know feel confident about them going against a defense like the Falcons or the the Panthers coming up i mean the lions they they have a decent pass rush i think they have like 20 sacks this year but it's nothing to be you know too afraid of yeah well that was to me this was like the scariest game of this like stretch coming up i mean divisional games on a short week are obviously not easy yeah. and not ideal but it wouldn't have shocked me if they would have lost this game and then the next no. several games get way scarier because you lose a couple in a row and you might not even win the division whereas yeah. you know three weeks ago you were in the driver's seat but then they come out and do this uh-huh. and now i'm not afraid of anybody like uh-huh. you know like even philadelphia i think that they could... that... no yeah i think there's an argument to be made that the vikings are the best team in the nfl right now it's crazy um, to think about i don't think the eagles have really been tested Mm-hmm. by anyone they've beaten like what the, the Cowboys without Ezekiel Elliott yep. without a bunch of their offensive linemen uh, they beat like the Chargers and stuff like that and yep. the Broncos so they're not they're playing well obviously yeah 
I think they beat the 49ers too. Ooh. Um, <laughs> so they're playing well, but like I've said before, I think I said this in the past podcast that, you know, I, they'll probably do well and get a first round bye, but they're one of those teams that I could see losing in that first playoff game just because they haven't faced a, a team that's, you know, uh, pretty balanced on both offense and defense like the Vikings are or, or like maybe a Falcons team is yeah, like that. Or even the Seahawks, which I think they're going to play. Actually, I think the Eagles and are playing the Seahawks and the Rams coming up in the next couple of weeks, so that'll be interesting yeah, to see. Yes, I remember reading that the, the Eagles' schedule looks a lot scarier than both the Vikings and... Um, the Saints? Yeah, and the Saints, who yeah. also are... Well, Same sets by the Rams, too. Yeah. We've looked – I mean, we've said it a bunch on different episodes, <laughs> but we got lucky playing them in the first week because they, yeah. they look unbelievable. I don't know. I'd be interested to see just because the way the Vikings run defense has been playing this year. Mm-hmm. It's just that, – that would be an interesting matchup to see because they shut down Todd Gurley yesterday. Like, he did nothing. Yeah. And, you know – Drew Brees I'd be scares interested. me, and I yeah, have like all that's, nine that's nightmares. The one, yeah, that's the one, the them. one, the one thing where like if they're if they're run, rushing attack, you know, isn't working, then they always have Drew Brees to fall back on. Mm-hmm. So, and he's so that would be hopefully that would I don't know. Like you said before, like there's no real team that makes you that worried about playing the Vikings. I still don't like the Seahawks. I just I don't know. I never have a good feeling about when the Vikings play them. Yeah. I'm hoping that we won't have to deal with them. I hope that they'll just everything will take care of itself and they will just like not be an issue for the Vikings because that's just one of those teams that I don't. I feel like they the Vikings have played well against them, but they never seem to play well enough to beat them ever. Oh, well, hopefully it would come down to a Blair Walsh kick. So. Oh God, and wouldn't that be dude? How poetic would that be if we win <laughs> in Seattle on a missed Blair Walsh field goal? Oh, that would because be. he would be he would be so nervous for that game. Oh yeah, he would. He, he would, would have to be that guy. Kickers in kick, general, kickers. and that Chicago guy kickers. too was like. Oh yeah. Do you see how bad that kick? Yeah, the, like, yeah. The Bears could have they could have tied it. Trubisky looks pretty good. He does look good. They're scary. We'll talk about them. Well, I guess. Yeah. They played the Lions. They did. Series. Yeah, that was what I was going to say was we'll talk about the Lions. Um, but right now, let's talk about Thielen a little bit more. How, A, how did this happen to where he got to this this level? And, B, do you think he can, like, sustain this over, like, a long period? Do you think we're, like, three to five years worth of Adam Thielen as, like, a Pro Bowl caliber wide receiver in front of us? Here? Yeah. Definitely, if he keeps getting the opportunities, like he saw a big increase in his targets when when Diggs went down, mm-hmm. that groin injury, and he missed I think was it week six against the Packers and week seven. Yeah, I think he saw like three around three more targets per game when Diggs was out, and so Keenum obviously has been having success throwing to to Thielen, so he's been continuing to give him more looks even with Diggs back. I think I figured out. Um, that in weeks one through five, when Diggs and Thielen were in there, both healthy or whatever, I think the Vikings averaged around like 20 points a game. Mm-hmm. And then in weeks, what, like six through 11, with Diggs missing two games and Thielen, Thielen getting more targets and being pretty much number one receiver, the Vikings are averaging around like 29 points a game. Interesting. So they've seen, yeah, so they've seen that points go up by almost 10 points. And it's just because... Thielen's getting the ball in his hands and and he can make plays. Definitely. And I also found out that I also looked up that 81% of Thielen's catches on second and third down this year have gone for a first down. Really? Have con- converted into a first down. Yeah, that's yeah. more than yeah 81%. That's more than Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, AJ Green, DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, second and third down. Adam Thielen gets his hands on the ball it's probably going to be a first down that is crazy and i that's also like that's I, more valuable than like a, a touchdown yeah because it yes. keeps the drive going definitely 
And for an offense like this, that's built, you know, a team that's built on a defense like that kind of conversion, that is the difference between winning games and losing games. A lot of times, and they are those keep running games. the ball, they get those short yardage situations. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. it's very important in an offense like this. I guess with Thielen, I underestimated how fast he is. Like I knew he was pretty yeah. fast, obviously, because he's you know an NFL wide receiver. But I, you know, I thought it was, was just precision yesterday. routes was part of that was a huge thing that was getting him that separation. But turns out. You can throw him a five-yard slant when they're blitzing, and he will just run past the secondary because yeah. he's that yeah. fast. That was shocking to me. He's definitely faster than uh, Latavius Murray. Mm-hmm. You know, Murray. Murray had a couple breakaway runs or whatever yesterday, but he kept getting caught from getting behind. Caught, but, oh, yeah. yeah. Thielen got the ball, and he was gone. That was unbelievable. He, I saw the ESPN like stat, track, whatever. It was like over 20 miles an hour. Oh, the next generation That's or whatever. That's bonkers to have yeah. a human move 20 miles an hour. <laughs> That doesn't make any sense to me. It's good. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And then did you see so good. He faked, he faked out that there was another play. I think it was the one where he got open. Kind, he was kind of wide open deep, and Keenum kind of overthrew him, but he had to dive for it. Yep. But to get open, he, like, broke the cornerback's ankles or whatever. And Spun him in a circle him, and dropped. Yeah, made him almost fall over. <laughs> but, yeah, if he got that ball, just throw him – Maybe a little normal. That probably would have been a touchdown too. But there were a couple whatever. of those that I noticed where Keenum, if he puts him in the perfect place, it's probably twenty more yards, if not more. Yeah. Because but Thielen has to sit down to catch it or has to dive to catch it. And I wish they didn't give quarterbacks all that yardage. Like he get Keenum or Keenum gets all sixty five yards. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That but pass to Thielen. Thielen got it like five yards past the line of scrimmage. Yes, I. You know that we were. I was talking about that at work today. Uh, do you? Yeah. Is it? Is that Keenum's fault that he? I mean, because he had to read read the play, knew, know the blitz was coming, know he was going to Thielen on the you know the hot route, and did all that. <laughs> but who did the majority of the work on that play? Probably the guy that was running 20 miles an hour yeah. with the ball down the sideline. Yeah, I haven't looked into it, but I'm curious to see like how much his yards this year come from yards after the catch, yeah. like with his receivers and stuff, compared to other quarterbacks. Like, like I know, I'm pretty sure Tom Brady gets a lot of his from that by just throwing like the short slants across the field and stuff. Yeah, and I know Aaron Rodgers too. That's they run those. Yeah, but I don't know. Plays. Aaron Rodgers can check it when he needs to. Yeah, that's true. He can. Those Hail Marys still just yeah. my dreams. <laughs> That's terrifying. Yeah. He's not even playing this year, and I still am afraid of Aaron Rodgers. That true Viking fan. I think fandom, he's, right? he's on schedule to, if the Packers are still in contention, which I don't think they will be. They got shut come, out at home. Yeah, he's, he's, he's uh, I think he's on pace to come back for the Vikings game by, by that. I think they play him Christmas Eve or something. Do you over week, under week 16? what are the – who wins that game? Do you think Aaron Rodgers and the Packers come in? If that's his first game back, do you think there's any way the Vikings win that game? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> I, think so. I think he throws for 450. In Green Bay. <laughs> probably he's going to – it's probably going to snow because it's Christmas Eve. Mm. I think it's a Saturday night game actually. Um, Is that the – what? that's the second or last week of the season? 16 yeah week 16 yeah, second yeah. second to last so yeah i don't know it probably depends like what the playoff scenarios are at that point mm-hmm. if the vikings even need to try they might you know already have the division that's what i was gonna say in hand by then yeah sitting the but then again they might still be fighting for home field mm-hmm. advantage depending on how like the saints and the eagles do over the next couple of weeks because i just wrote how i just wrote on the viking age how this week's game is is pretty darn important just because the Lions are not only in the division but in the conference too, and a win keeps them their hopes for home field advantage throughout the playoffs, including the Super Bowl, you know, alive. But a loss, you know, that could just keep them out of the running for yeah. a bye. Well, that's the, the yeah the difference between yeah a win and a loss this week is yeah you go from what would you be nine and two with a win which puts you in the I don't want to say driver's seat but puts you right there for home field but you lose yeah. and then uh, Detroit is only a game behind and holds the tiebreaker because they beat you they beat twice. twice yeah and you're all of a sudden 
Detroit looks a lot scarier because have you seen their schedule for the rest of this year is cake. Yeah, it's they, pretty cake. Yeah, they got but, nobody. But, but based on how they looked yesterday. Yeah, that's true. And against they, the Bears. And they do this thing, and they did it last year too. We've talked about it a little bit, but they won so many close games last year. I thought there was no way they could do that again. And those are the games that they're winning, basically, are the close games, the tight games that they are like this past week where they're, you know, coming back and winning and with less yeah. than a minute. And they give up a lot of sacks. Mm-hmm. Like I think they've given up a little over 30 sacks this year. And in 10 games. so tough, though. Yeah, he's, he's always but was, seems to throw for a couple touchdowns and like. Two yeah, I think he has like yards. 19, 19 or twenty so far this year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, their passing offense is pretty good. Their rushing offense is pretty bad. Yeah, so they're definitely gonna. I saw a stat not too long ago where it's like they haven't had a hundred yard rusher in long time. A long time, like long time. like like desperation. Long time, like trying to think i think it's early 2000 yeah oh who would it have been i can't remember that's terrible i should have written uh, i think it was reggie there. bush oh was that okay that would make it sense might have been. i it's think probably it was reggie, reggie bush. bush against the vikings <laughs> <laughs> was probably what it was but yeah, yeah this game uh short week super important at detroit yeah. Do you... Hopefully, uh, no Aretha Franklin. Oh but... man, that's right. I almost <laughs> forgot about that. That was the longest. I like started. That was. It took so long that like halfway through it, I was like, okay, I'm enjoying this now. Now this is funny to me. How long? <laughs> I would have been like, like uh, I'm gonna have to take a knee. My my legs are getting tired. I can't stand here any longer. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be like outraged like all oh, these players took a knee it's like no it's just because their legs yeah, were tired they, were tired. they didn't want it <laughs> it was aretha she's still going <laughs> they just start the game while she's on like halfway through the yeah. Tune. <laughs> yeah. i don't know who's doing the anthem this year but hopefully not her <laughs> hopefully someone who's under the age of 70 yeah but see detroit oh maybe it's kid rock detroit maybe it'll be eminem they have so many options in detroit they're so lucky there eminem can't sing the national anthem no with that kind of an attitude he can't <laughs> they'll bring beyonce could, with oh them. god could you imagine if eminem like spoken word recited the national anthem that would be probably make it pretty cool but that would be magical so detroit just beat chicago chicago's not very impressive stafford looks pretty good they lost to Det- the Vikings, that is, lost to Detroit last time, but they only scored seven points. The offensive obvi- is obviously much more potent now or seems mm-hmm. to be running better than it had been at that point. Yep. How many points do you think this offense is going to score this week? Do you do you foresee them playing well, or do you think this is going to be like another 14-7 game? No, based on the last couple of weeks, I would think that they can put up you know, between 20 and 30 points. Um, the blinds have been giving up that much. I think what they gave up yesterday, 24 to the bears. And they think they gave yep. up around, let's see. Oh, they gave up 24 to the Browns. Jeez Louise. 17 to the Packers, 20 to the Steelers, 52 to the saints. <laughs> 52. Anytime you're giving up more than 50 points in a football game, you got issues. Yeah, so I I just think that that game in week four was really odd. Dalvin Cook went out midway yes, through. Yes, the so. Dalvin Cook thing. That was, and we talked about that a little bit before. That was, you could see the team was shaken. That was a gut that. check. Yeah. Yeah. That was a kick in the pants. Definitely. Because they now they you know obviously they didn't game plan with McKinnon being involved that much in the game and now he's a big part of the the rushing offense and I think they figured out how to use uh, Murray and McKinnon yeah. you know a good amount each game they figured out how like how to use each of them um, how to get the most out of them I guess I'm trying yeah, to say yeah no that's that's totally it that's exactly right and. Murray, I've been impressed with him, but I think you said it better. More impressed with the way they've been using him. Yeah, the, you know, he's a, 
He's a short yards guy. Yeah, play into his strengths. Let him run downhill. If he gets a crease, he'll run it as far as he can, and somebody will catch him and tackle him. You know, like yeah, that. he's and not then, gonna. Yeah, use, he's not gonna break away. Yeah, use McKinnon for your I mean, you know, in did. open space and. Yeah, I think they have done a great job. I think Pat Shermer has done an exceptional job. Yeah. Didn't Murray have a run? He had a long run that was called back yesterday, right? Stealing had oh, yeah, the block something. in the back, yeah. Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah, so he should have had, yeah, conceivably, he should have had, like, probably closer to, like, 120 yards. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, he played really well. He's really. the Vikings leader, leading rusher now this year, finally. Finally. Finally, Dalvin Cook overtook is not the leader <laughs> anymore. Like six weeks of him not playing, and he still yeah. was the high, <laughs> the high rusher on the team. That's not a good sign for your. But it does say a lot about exciting. how good, yeah, how good he yeah. is, and or can be in year. the future. It's such a bummer that Shermer is going to be gone. Is there any way? There's no way he stays, right? He's got. He's taking a job somewhere oh. else. <laughs> Especially since he's already been a head coach. Yeah. Did you, speaking of that, have you looked at what he did when he was, because he was at Cleveland, right? Yeah, it wasn't that bad. No, not bad at all. And compared it was to how, and it was compared how they are right now, I can't remember who was, I think, was it was Brian Hoyer his quarterback? I think so, I think that's yeah. That's who he had. I think so. He had, I think he was there when Josh Gordon was there, too. I think they won, f- like, four or they five beat games. The Vikings. Or was that when the Browns had... Chudzinski or whatever his name was. I don't even remember. I remember that though. That was when the Vikings started like 0 and 3 or something. Yeah. They were 0 and 2, and then they're like, all right, we're playing the Browns at home. This is easy. And then they oh, lost. God. Season over. I think that was 2013. And uh, Leslie Frazier's last season. Yeah, yeah. And then that was. Who did they draft the year after that? What? Because that horrible season begat something. That Teddy was. I remember finally. Oh, it was the Teddy. That was what it was. Yeah. So I I remember saying, okay, this is worth it now. Because 2013 was the uh, Ponder Castle Josh Freeman year. Oh God, so. Josh Freeman! I forget. <laughs> I pushed that out of my memory. That was. I think so. I think he's in like the some like semi-pro arena European league or something right now. I don't know. Is he still the all-time leader in Tampa Bay? Or no, I think Winston just passed him, Jameis Winston. Not oh, too long ago, like but yardage, he was, Yeah, Freeman was still the... Yeah. Well, yeah, because you think about how many quarterbacks the Bucks yeah. didn't have. Not, they had Trent Dilfer, Brad, Brad Johnson. Johnson. might be their number two all-time. <laughs> I think like Sean King, if you remember, remember oh, him. Oh, yeah, Sean King, Yes. Wow, Sean King. I almost forgot about him. Yeah, and Dilfer, he was in Tampa Bay, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Dilfer for a while. Real good stuff. Yeah. Tampa Benny Bay. Testaverde, Steve Young was there. What? When was Steve Young there? Yeah, before he got traded to the 49ers. No He was way. drafted by the Bucks. No shit. Mm-hmm. Doug Williams was there. Oh, yeah, I knew Doug Williams was there. That's Everybody crazy. was there. <laughs> Poor Tampa Bay. They bought, you know, how many Super they Bowls Super they have? Bowl. Yeah, that's yeah. frig off, Tampa Bay. That's disgusting. Um, so I guess Detroit. Thanksgiving. I think that. I, I honestly think that situation is more comparable to the Vikings right now than um, when people compare it to like, like the Ravens. Because people forget that the Buck. The Bucks had a really good defense that really year too. Really good defense. Yeah. Brad Johnson. He's he's not. He wasn't like horrible compared to the way Trent Dilfer or mm-hmm. what Tony Banks were for the Ravens. But yeah. he wasn't amazing. Yeah, and you would think but, if you yeah if you I fast had, forward. Fast forward Keyshawn 10 Johnson. years, they would, they'd talk about Brad Johnson the same way they'd talk about a Case Keenum, where it was like, oh, it was him. He wasn't great. Yeah, he was, he yeah. was okay. I don't think of Brad so Johnson think, yeah, the I same think, way I think of Dilfer. Yeah, no, I think I that team was more comparable than, you know, people always use the Ravens for any time there's a good defense and mm. either an unknown quarterback or a quarterback that's not that great. But Keenum's actually playing pretty well. I think it's interesting that people have such a tough time, myself included, the, you know, like the backup label on Keenum. Like, it's so hard for me to accept that he can perform at this level. Well, just because of his past. That's yeah, why. exactly. Yeah. And it's like, I can't believe that you're still doing this. Like, I But he was also, he was also in, his situations in the past weren't the greatest either. He was yeah. with, what, the Texans. Mm-hmm. They never had a really good offense. Uh, then he was with the Rams. 
who were <laughs> the under, entire under, time he was there, they were waiting looking under Jeff for somebody Fisher. else to take over because yeah. then they yeah. brought in Foles or Foles was there, right? Uh, yeah, they brought they did bring in Foles. Yeah, so he was never going to be the starter. I think there, Keenum either. was Foles' backup mm-hmm. for one year. I know. I think that's the only two teams he was with. I feel like he was with somebody else, but I can't remember. I think you're right. But yeah, just that his past success or lack of success is why uh, you know people like you and me look at him as a backup because that's all he's been. And I, even after this year, I, I'm sure if he continues to play the way he is, someone will give him starter money. But I still kind of look at him like someone would look at like a Ryan Ryan Fitzpatrick or a Josh McCown. Yeah, that kind of level. Just I don't know. Someone, what was I listening to yesterday? The vent line for 1500 and someone was saying how he could be the next Kurt Warner. And no. I think Mackie, Mackie might have said it. And I was thinking at the same time, like, Kurt Warner threw 40 touchdowns in his, like, first season as a starter. <laughs> <laughs> he was the MVP. Yeah. It's way different. It's so different. And then, the, yeah. The closest thing that they have in common is like their age, and that's like they, the they both played for the Rams. Yeah, and that too, I suppose. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's it's so amazing to me that he's playing so well. But I think you hit it like pretty right on earlier when you said that. You know, it's not just the offensive line; it's not just the wider. It's all of that stuff together makes it look yeah. so much better for everybody else. The offensive line looks so good because Case Keenum's looking so good. Case Keenum looks so good because the offensive line looks good because wide receivers are catching the ball. You know, everybody doing what they're supposed to do allows yeah. everybody to, you know. Tremor's getting he's getting the most out of the players that he has instead of trying to make everyone learn his system like a lot of offensive coordinators do today. You look at the Bills and mm-hmm. their situation they got going on over there and there's a bunch of teams that have stubborn offensive coordinators that want their players to, you know, adapt to their system rather than adapt use their skill the set. Yeah. Yeah. Like look at Houston when they got to Sean Watson there, they switched the offense up totally and he was lighting it up. Yeah. That's what you have to do. You can't make, you can't make someone like a Robert Griffin into a pocket passer. That was exactly what I was going to bring up. When was he successful? When the offense was catered to yeah. what? And then they're like, oh, and then what they do, fire him and brought in Jay Gruden, and Gruden's like, oh, we'll just make him in a, a pocket passer. Yeah. Yeah, because that works. Exactly. Ever Turns out before this Cousins guy is better as, as a pocket passer. Oh, yeah. no kidding. Was yeah. Is he? Shocking. But yeah, no, Sherman's doing well. I like the way that he calls stuff. He doesn't have, it doesn't seem like he has the same play calls either every game, like, Musgrave, yeah, back in the day ran like ten plays. Oh, uh, it was so. Well, funny. he only had ten plays on his his play on sheet. On his whole sheet, yeah. Exactly. You see, you see, he's the he's the new uh, OC in Denver. No, really. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, they just fired their offensive coordinator, and he was the quarterbacks coach. So he's the the new OC he over there. Moved up. Is that what Shermer was a quarterbacks coach before he got promoted to uh, here? Yeah. No, he was a tight ends coach. Oh, tight ends, ends coach. My fault. Coach. My bad. My bad. My bad. How could I have confused those two? But it is unbelievable so how those guys – I mean, that guy was a head coach in this league, and he was coaching tight ends and is now well, going to probably be a head coach next year. I think Zimmer just wanted to get him on the staff. Smart Because move. He's, he did previously coach tight ends in, like, his coaching career or whatever, so he probably saw that as, like, a way to get him in there and – Obviously, he wanted to get some of his input on the offense, and yeah. that's probably what led to Norv leaving. Say, that's North probably North why he's not there anymore. <laughs> this is my off. They're all seven-step drops. That's yeah, how this yeah. offense works. Yeah, that's I'm sure another. during that bye week, that's when everything went down. Norv was Norv probably like put his foot down because Zimmer is probably like, "Yo, this stuff is working. Let's keep doing it." Yeah. So that's I think yeah that's what a great example of a guy who didn't cater to. Like your offensive line is trash, and you want your quarterback to take seven step drops on every pass play, you're not going to complete any passes, man. Like that, and you got Adrian Peterson back there trying to block too. Ugh. That was yeah, unbelievable. McKinnon had, McKinnon had some nice blocks yesterday. He did. I was. He's been impressive, but I am more impressed with it. Like I knew he was a shifty dude, but he almost has like kind of stepped onto like a different level the last like couple three games. McKinnon mm-hmm. just he is 
just That's like a receiver too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is like making the first guy miss almost every time he touches the ball yeah. is you know obviously a great sign. But that's that's his skill set, and he gets put in positions to be able to do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Unlike before, when just asked him to run straight into the the pile. Yeah. <laughs> and when it, it is so frustrating to me that you can look at a guy like McKinnon, just like size wise, and then look at a guy like Murray. And then, like, no, you guys play the same position on this <laughs> offense. You do the same thing. You practice the same stuff. Like, how could you yeah. possibly look at those yeah. two players and expect them to do the same thing well, yeah. you know? I was looking at – uh, sense. You were talking about the next-gen stats before, before. They actually have stuff that shows, like, all their runs. Like, they just – I don't know. They draw them in a straight line or a line or whatever where they go. And all McKinnons go, like, around – the center of the field and then all of uh murray's are like straight, straight up, up the middle the of the, of the field, field. <laughs> so, they're doing what you know they're good that's what they're good at so mm-hmm. might as well oh it makes sense and it's refreshing to see guys being utilized in that way as opposed to having to watch adrian peterson mm-hmm run into a brick wall over and over you know and then sometimes he'd break one or whatever and it was adrian peterson so I was fine with it when it was happening, but it's so nice to watch an offense that doesn't have to be centered around that. It's so boring. That's not that's not easy to game plan against. Yeah, exactly. Um, what were we? Oh yeah, Detroit Thanksgiving. Yeah. What do you think? How many points do you think Detroit is going to score? How do you think that offense is going to play against this defense? On, I mean, granted they're. In the same division, but... Yeah, I think it'll be a close game. Yeah. Just because it is a division game, and the Lions... I think the Lions have won five of the seven games against the Vikings with Mike Zimmer as a yeah. head coach. Yeah, that makes so. me sad. I didn't realize that he had <laughs> lost so many to the Lions. That's but, crazy. Yeah. Um, so I do think it'll be close, but I do think it'll probably be like a 24-20 to 20 kind of score, or 24-17. You want to lay down a prediction? Sounds like you're throwing numbers out there. Sure, sure. We'll do 24-20. Where did my pen go? You never mind. You can't predict anything because I can't document it. Oh, good. 24-20, you said? Yeah. Okay. Um, we, got, well, we have uh, audio evidence. So. Yeah, there you go. I, yeah, I guess it is being documented, isn't it? <laughs> Both visually and uh, I'm actually get, I'm going to be on my way to Vegas during like the middle of the game. So Really? Sure. A couple of days, yeah, because it's super cheap to go to Vegas during Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Thanksgiving Don't travel. There. Yeah, might as well, right? Why wouldn't you? Yeah, I've been to Vegas once, and it was when my band we were on tour. We were driving from Minnesota to California, and we went through Las Vegas. Yeah. Like, dude, wake up! It's the Strip. And I looked up, and <laughs> was like, "Oh, lights!" And then I felt so that's yeah. all I have of Vegas. Yeah, I'm not, I've like, never been there, so see how it goes yeah are you a big better yeah, do you I'll, put money on games i was gonna say maybe i'll i'll put a a wager on uh probably not the game but maybe like the vikings winning the super bowl or something there you go the long like, way i think it's i think actually if i was gonna do that it'd probably be a better idea to do that before the season because i think their odds are like seven to one now so yeah yeah, yeah. those odds really, are definitely improving steadily <laughs> as yeah, the weeks go by they're not really sure. worth it that much anymore but yeah 24 to 20. That's All right. what I got. I'm going to go 21 14 Vikings. Ooh. Um, but I think. You're not, no 28 this week? Yeah, all right. I'll go 28 14. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's keep it. Let's keep it. Let's keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. 28 14, <laughs> and I'm going to say the defense is going to score a touchdown because they haven't done that. And yeah. I am not impressed with their uh, takeaway numbers, although they haven't needed them. I want a defensive touchdown this week. That's my prediction. Well, the, the Vikings, they did sack. Stafford six times in the first game, so could get him for a couple, maybe a fumble or two, Just pick that up and bring it in the end zone. Sack six times, gave up 14 points, and still lost. It's a weird game. It is. Weird. It's a strange, a strange beast, this football. <laughs> hey, but the Vikings haven't lost since then. So. That's true. I can't believe that. You're so right on the Dalvin Cook thing, though. I think they win that game if Dalvin Cook doesn't get injured. I think that psychologically yeah, why, well, why would you game, Why would you game plan for him to not play? Yeah. So, I don't even think – I think Murray 
I mean, everyone always talks about his ankle injury, like every game. He's still healing. But um, I think he still was recovering from his ankle. He wasn't 100% yet. So he, Yeah, he looked. It's totally, he's totally a different player now than he was, what, six or seven weeks ago? Yeah. So that, that's almost two months ago. So it's a long time to, to heal up. Yeah, and what a different team the Vikings look like after, you know, from that loss to after this win. It's like night yeah. and day difference. They are a confident group. It's but no, really I feel to watch. Yeah, I feel good about their chances because the Lions, they haven't really beat anyone good since mm-hmm. they played the Vikings. They played, they beat the Bears, the Browns, and the Packers without Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. And they lost to the Steelers. They lost to the Saints. I can't remember who else. Oh, the Falcons. Or was that before? No, that was before. But they lost to somebody else. So I think the Vikings are better than all of those teams. They the Vikings should win. It's tough in the division though. It's yeah. so you never because even when they play the Bears, it's a close game. Mm-hmm. So terrifying. We will see. We will. Well, uh, turns out I'm looking at the clock. We've been doing this for 57 minutes already. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. So that's a good sign for us. But It's almost uh, like Joe Rogan territory. Over yeah, here. right. <laughs> <laughs> that is a long show. I, I that like that show, but that's that's a lot of show to do. <laughs> um, well, all right, man. Let's uh, – I guess we can call it. And do you yeah. want to do – well, we'll we'll talk about it. But uh, they're playing on Thursday. You're in Vegas, so yeah. you probably yeah. – do you want to do another episode this week or should we wait till Monday? Yeah, I'm going to be out of town. Yeah, you get your Vegas on and we'll, uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll see you in one week. I'll be back on Sunday, so in time for football. All right. Well, uh, thanks for being here, buddy. Hey, I'm, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> we will, we'll see you next week, man. Skull. Go yeah. Vikings. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Super Bowl home block. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Get in there. I can listen. All right. Bye. Uh...